So like a couple of years ago when I finished my degree in school, I was sort of sitting around kind of bored, um, had no desire to read another book again for a couple of years. Uh, I was just feeling a little bit um, burned out and um, there were a few people that had suggested to me, well, maybe you should revisit, um, you know, your old hobby or, well, what, what was a business at, at one time. Um, but it was hard for me because to go back to it would, 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 would mean that I didn't have the same approach to it like maybe a lot of you do, like as a hobby. I never saw it in the same way. So what I decided to do was is I would just reapproach it as a hobby, you know, and just because I didn't need to treat it as a business anymore because it wasn't. And so what I did was is I, I decided that, okay, so I don't have any money. <laughs> and um, I had a few, you know, parts of locomotives, a few cars kicking around. I had some turnouts that I'd already built, um, you know, out of code uh, 83 and um, scratch built from previous projects in the past. And then I had this... Um, like even the framework I had here was, uh, they were flats from my theater days, I believe, and um, or film stuff. And so I just, I had these frameworks, uh, three quarter ply, and then I, they were maybe two by eight. And I cut two of them down to 16 inches deep and then eight feet long. And I just laid a, a raunchy piece of door skin, one eighth door skin, I believe it was, or three sixteenth on top of the base one here. And then up above in a similar way. So I just took the two of them, mirrored off each other and raised one up for a lighting valance. And then this is what I built the the layout and the diorama on, right? And I, in fact, like the track was Code 83 Atlas with my scratch built turnouts. And I just like glued them straight onto the board. I didn't put any cork down, no foam. Um, I just used like dirt from the driveway that I sifted with a, you know, from the dollar store, an old flower sifter. I had some, you know, just residual stuff left over. You know, I said, I'm going to, I'm not going to spend any money at all. I'm going to see how far I can go before I have to. And so the actual layout, as you see it, including the buildings, which I scratch built out of residual leftover plastic and I have an old cardboard box. You know, we probably all have them with just, just you know, miscellaneous stuff in there. And and um, so I just decided oh, I'm going to scratch build all the building flats and so on. So initially, I didn't have to put out really any money. And um, so, you know, I mean, I would say that if I had to, you know, if I had to subsidize anything, um, you know, it would for sure be less than what a, a average locomotive would cost or even two cars you know like I mentioned earlier like like I looked at the cost of auto rocks a hundred bucks a pop oh my goodness it's just unbelievable you know anyway I won't get on that right now but um, so I basically built this this eight foot by 16 inch layout uh, which is um, completely uh, doable for anyone um, economically and, and and like space wise right like this thing doesn't take up really any space like it just fits in a small area by the window here and it runs the full length of one wall with a two foot staging so 10 feet in total and it, I can do all the things or achieve all the immersion factor than I did in the past when I had some you know massive layouts compared to this you know, I finally saw the light, right? And, and that's not to cast a shadow on large layouts or uh, people's lifetime achievements. I respect those and uh, bravo to those. But, you know, like I'm semi-retired now. I'm a boomer. And uh, I just, you know, even if I did have the space to do it, I probably wouldn't. I don't want to wake up to an overwhelming project anymore. I want to relax and enjoy the hobby. And I I can do that now with a small footprint and so can you if you want to. Um, so, yeah, and then, of course, I've acquired more rolling stock and more locomotives because I really like to model. Like, I think it's important to really be honest with yourself and say, OK, what do I really like about the hobby? Like, just write it down. 
like I wrote down all the list of all the pros and cons, the things I like to do, the things I don't like to do. And I like to do a little bit of all of it, to be frank. And um, But I really like doing locomotives. I love weathering, painting, as you know. I like to share all those techniques and uh, procedures because I don't think they're very difficult. I think it's just really the fear factor is what makes it difficult. Like this, this entity of fear uh, stops us from even trying. And if you just go for it, right, you just learn. You like It's a learning curve that we all have to deal with. And uh, we get better and better at it as we make mistakes along the way, because there's always going to be mistakes. Any artist will tell you that, that the, their greatest achievements were uh, deliberate mistakes. Okay, so there you have it, the Glover Road diorama in the beginning. Uh, where this uh, little layout will end, I do not know. I really don't want it to end. Uh, I, you know, I want to <laughs> keep adding to it, right? Uh, because you can. That's the beauty of model railroad and you can take the detail as far as you want to go. If you don't want to do scenery, that's fine too. Um, but I love to model. I like to make a small scene, a highly detailed scene with greater immersion so I can run the uh, custom built locomotives with the high quality sound that I have, shoving around a few box cars or tankers or whatever. Uh, I can slip a six axle in on the scene now and again on the main and drop off a local, <clears throat> excuse me, and, um, you know, uh, just uh, experience the whole model railroad hobby uh, on a smaller manageable footprint and still get the same amount of enjoyment that someone would on a, on a very large layout, you know. So uh, I hope you all enjoy the channel so far. Thank you to uh, all the latest subscribers. I really appreciate you. It, it's actually what helps make this uh, channel a success. It uh, motivates me, encourages me to want to do more and share more and uh, help contribute to the sort of, well, the burgeoning virtual community, right? And the times that we live right now. Okay, so uh, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.